We have been looking at the topic of altar, the mystery of altars. Genesis chapter 6, verse 4. The way of introduction. The Bible said there were giants in the earth on those days and also after. That when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they bear children to them. And the same became mighty men, men which of old were men of renown. In this world there are men of renown. Men who achieve things that were extraordinary. Men who are very popular. The Bible called them mighty men. But men of renown, as we see, is an intercourse between men and what? And the sons of God. Now let me share this secret with you. No man become renowned in the world without what? Encountering a deity. No man become renowned in every area of field, whether it is science or education or business or politics, whatever it is, no man now or to be come into contact with the deity or to have intercourse with the, world, the sons of God in this world there are two types of people there are predators and there are prey do you know what I said? in this world there are two types of men predators not predators the lions and the prey, the world. In this land, you are either a predator or you are a what? A prey. You cannot be in between. You are either conquered and subjugated or you are ruling in dominion. You are either every day complaining about life, struggling to pay the pay bill, struggling to buy a car and build a house. I see that is an achievement. Struggling to pay children's fees. I tell my wife, I like him. He said, I don't hope to be in the condition where I have to go and exchange to pay school fees. So there are two sets of people. And do you know that somebody who just, the other day they said someone donated one billion men. <laughs> She came to see me, he told me, I said, I'm going to go to the other And it is true. There are people who are living the life, and there are people who are doing rich here. What is rich here in English? You are not linked with the God, you are just a prey. 
they pray on you. That's why those people who are rich, who have joined calls, once in a while they will go to the street and carry one here like that, isn't it? They say, yeah, come to my hotel room and give me money. She will come after the doing what they are doing, they will just cut her neck because she's a free. They just put her and sacrifice her life. But they will say, we need 20 souls now. And before you know, the throw tanker will come and what? And boss in the market. And hundreds of people will die. They are just what? You are either a predator or you are a prey. And every predator has what link with the government. Now, as simple as this, supposing you want to be governor of your city, do you know that ordinary man cannot be governor of the state? You think you just carry yourself and create posters. Because you have money. You can have all the money in the world. You cannot go anywhere until a God back you. So I was telling him about the governor that he was telling his, someone was telling him guy. He appointed him commissioner. And when you see what they are doing, you call him and say, ah, oh God, this is what we are doing. I'm going to enter the kingdom of God. They are Muslims, so you look at him. I say, if you want to enter this thing, forget our help. I'm Muslim. So you want to do this thing, forget about help. That we enjoy our reward here or what? We tell you that we, are, we know we are going to end. We have sold our soul to the devil. That is why we are where we are. And the secret that leads men to the gods and to the deities is the mystery of all. Connects with what? With the evil spirits. And there is a power to become men of renown on earth. There is what? Altars. Go to those big mansions, you will discover that there is a room. Am I saying something? There is a room that the father says, What? Nobody should what? Should enter. Because in that room there is a little calabash and a meal. And the father will go and enter there and he will offer fire and sacrifice upon an altar. Some riches and money that you see people carrying about is what? Altar. I was told a story of a man who had a very big shop. It seemed as if he was living on the street and everybody that goes on that street entered that shop to buy things. And one day the shop caught fire. And everything was burnt in the shop. The man just came. He said, where's my cat? He said, where's my cat? I can't find my cat. I can't find my cat. He saw the cat. He grabbed the cat. He said, ah! And he left. Sir, your whole shop, what millions of naira was bought, and you are only interested in your cat. <laughs> I don't need to tell you that that cat is a source. And once you want to open another shop, just release the cat, that's how the business will come back. When you look around and you see people making speed, don't envy them. Someone see, someone saw his friend, business was booming, 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 booming. Ah, ah. The guy was just one shop, two shop, three shop, four shop, five shop. His own is also doing the same business. They went to him and said, my friend, how come we are selling the same thing? How come your own shop is multiplying? <laughs> they said, just forget about it. It's the grace of God. It's the grace of God. So he keep pestering him. 
So one day you say, you really want to know? You say, I want to know. You really want to know? You say, I want to know. And then he asks another question. Can you do anything to be rich? He said, I can do anything to be rich. He said, okay. 12 o'clock, I will come and take you somewhere. <laughs> I will take you somewhere. I went there, went to the wrong blood. You <laughs> saw men going to the right. They brought blood in the calabash, human blood. You say, drink. She you said, you can do it. <laughs> you said, you can do anything. <laughs> Altars are raised by men of renown. And if you think you can become renowned without raising an altar, you are deceiving yourself. But the problem is, even if you don't want to be a man of renown, you have become a free. Do you know some parents sacrifice the destiny of their children on the altar? Yeah, your father is not in all of these things. And you are just living your life. I just want to be normal. I just want to be a good priest. <laughs> I want to be a good priest. <laughs> and then you see your life going upside down. Because altar was raised. And that altar prayed and sacrificed on the altar. You see, so you see, you don't have an option but to live with God and become what? A man of altar too. Because when people of altar raise altar, you raise their altar. Thank you for that song. He said, let my altar swallow their what? Altars. You cannot live an ordinary life. Let me tell you something. To evil spirits and God become men of renown in this life and let her go to hell. It is better to live a life of a dream. I want to say if you want to serve the devil, what? Serve him very, very, very well. You want to serve the devil? Don't serve him the way you are serving him now. <laughs> you want to serve the devil? Don't serve him the way you are serving him now. Serve him very well. He went to the university and met me then, and he was asking, where are the secret society? Hundred levels great, He said, I want to join the court. I learned that in the university there are courts that the people are powerful. I want to join. He went about asking questions. <laughs> but there is an altar that connects to the heavens. And that altar than all altars. And I told you what an altar is. An altar is the altar that connects the cosmos. An altar is the system of authorization. Is the system. You know, when they raise the altar to the evil realm, they what? There is a release of demons. I must say something. The ladder connects with what? The kingdom of darkness. And demons are authorized to come to the earth and empower the person so that he can do what he wants to do. The one told me in my village that someone has a demon that when he will go to farm, he may do in one evening, you what? You just see he has finished all the farm, one person. You just go, you think he's doing, but there are like demons that are fighting with him. That's why those people want demons, because they help them. But then the demon will need, you need to maintain the what? The altar will sacrifice. When they come and say, okay, I'll be doing this thing for you. Go and bring your father. Go and bring your father. Because altars have to be maintained by sacrifice. But there is an altar in the heavens. And it is God that is at the height of that altar. And that altar is greater than any other altar. 
But often than not, we are confused about this. The source of evil are pressing us. They are what? Destroying us. The simple reason is not because their altar is greater than ours. But the problem is that we don't have altar. They have destroyed our own altars. If we begin to raise our altars too, we begin to realize that there is a power that is above every power. The Bible says, God has raised us up and has made us to what? To sit in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus far above all principalities and powers. That's the reign that we will pray to. But that reign is of no use to us because we have not opened the portals. For what? When they open their portals, demons come. When we open our portals, angels are released. <laughs> And we talk about the altar of prayer. Prayer opened the world, the stargates of the cosmos. Persistent prayer. And then we see the altar of sacrifice. Continuous and persistent sacrifice of your money, your resources, your time, your family, everything you could go to trust. You have raised an altar. And then the last altar we'll be looking on today is the altar of obedience. So you can say the altar is divided into three. When you bring these three altars, the altar is complete. And then you begin to ascend. And I told you that there is altar pastor altar. Altar for the family. Altar for the world community. Altar for the state. The most sacrifice is supposed to consume. So you can decide where you want to be. At least have a personal altar so that you will not become a what? A prey. Because if you now have a personal altar, you're a prey. You see some people who attack his house, they will kill everybody. The only the one that what? will survive because he has a personal altar. But the man who has a what? Altar that covers his family. The entire family will be what? Will be delivered. Because one man raised an altar and covered all of us. The least altar you can have is a personal altar. But if you have only a personal altar, you are a selfish person. <laughs> Begin to make sacrifice for others. You either be an altar. But you are related with the man of what? Of all time. What is it something? Because there are people who do not actually have no jobs. They don't drink for the prayer But they have one papa in the village. That they visit. And they give them money. And the papa will give them some little prayer and chance. The same in the spirit prayer. You must link yourself with a man of altar. Praise God. Amen. The greatest of all the altars. Let's see first Samuel chapter 15, verse 32. And the most difficult of the altars to maintain is an altar. In the life, have you seen people like that? Two components of the altar are well prepared, but a vital component was what thrown to the ground. It is in that Samuel said, Had the Lord as great delight in what? Both offerings and sacrifices as in what? Obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, than the fact of what? Of us. Thank God for an altar of prayer. Thank God for an altar of sacrifice. There is an altar that is bigger than this one. And that's the altar of obedience. Bible say what? Obedience is better than sacrifice. It's 
not the altar of sacrifice. When the enemy wants to attack you, the devil is fat. You see, the devil understood how the Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of what? Knowledge. The devil knew that you can open a portal to the heavens of heaven and receive help from the spirit beings to defeat him. He knows that his altar is not as powerful as your altar. So the first thing he does when he wants to attack you is to destroy your altar. Where is the story of Gideon? They destroyed the altar of God and they erect the altar of Baal. Where the altar of God is supposed to be? And they begin to oppress them. They oppress the Israelites because they destroyed their altar. So the enemy, the first thing he does will be to what? To destroy our altar. Typical example. In the morning we read about Bala. Now say something about Bala. Deuteronomy. Chapter 31, verse 16. We read about Bala. We say Bala was a man of altars. In the morning we said, Bala has this word, strange power. If Bala opens his mouth and calls to your word, your cause. If he blesses you, you are blessed. And he was called to come and what? Cause Israel. Tell us the cause. To make you not to prosper. Begin to happen in your life that you don't understand. That's the cause. You are about to succeed, something will happen in your faith. You are seeing victory. You are just about to grab it. The door is locked. They will preach your car, they are about to get married. And the guy will wake up one day and say, I'm not interested. But he will just travel and have an accident and die. Because you are a prey. So they raised, they were raising an altar, cause them. Even altar causes people. Even altar causes destinies. Even altar causes delay. You look at yourself, am I supposed to be here? You look at your colleagues and say, God, something is wrong. Say, I cry and reject. Of course, you are doing it right here because the evil altars are placed a cause in our life. And we discovered that he was a man who understood the mysteries of altars. It's not here. And he said, What? Well, go and build what? Seven altars and sacrifice a bull and a ram on each of the altars. Because he knew when an altar is raised, the portal. A man cannot speak and it comes to pass. You know that? You come and say, okay, you stand out here and say, oh, you are blessed, you are blessed. You think anybody will be blessed? Nobody will be blessed until the heavens respond to it. And the heavens can only respond when what? Then the doors of heaven are what? Open. And it is altars that open that. And the man, when he tried to cross his way, he did not walk. Because they were raising, you know they were raising one strong altar that somebody called Moses. That is raising an altar that is greater than Bala. Moses is greater than Bala. Because Moses raised an altar, anytime Bala wants to cause them, the God of Moses appeared to him and said, These people are blessed. They cannot be cursed. Because of the altar Moses raised for the children of Israel. When he discovered that he cannot cross them directly, he remembered that's another altar. Altar of obedience. Is that the verse I'm looking for? I don't think so. Barak and say, Barak, God has refused 
me because of the strength of their altars. And the only way to succeed is what? Let's go down their altar of obedience. We may not stop them from praying. We may not stop them from bringing the tithes and the offerings because these are routine things. If they do not do, hey, something will happen. He said the altar of obedience. Go and what? Create some what? Some fine, fine little babies. Because on the altar of obedience, there is a commandment that says, Thou shalt not commit what? Adultery. And they went and said, Go and get the most beautiful women in me, in what? In Moab. Let them dress seductively. The ones that are coming. The ones that are fear to look upon. Send them. Pulling down what? Of us. The devil is more subtle than we think. Pull down their altar of obedience. Pull down their altars of disobedience, of obedience, by making them to disobey the commandments of their God. Because the greatest altar is altar of altar of loyalty. God demands loyalty from his subjects. People of God, anytime the devil tells you to disobey God, if you do not have an understanding that he's trying to pull your altar so that he can attack you, you will be free. Let's destroy their altars. Let's destroy their altars. And you know what happened? The Israelites started committing adultery and fornication with the more balanced women. And Barak did not need to fight them. God himself come and about about 20,000 people died. If they are going to battle, they will have killed 20,000. God himself become their enemy. Any time the temptation comes and God says, Oh, don't do it, Daniel. You see, there are two types of obedience. There are general obedience to the commandments of God that you do. There are also specific obedience where God will come and tell you. For example, say, Brother, I want to be you to be a missionary in Iran. It's not a lot of prophecy. Where are you? 